my fellow Amazonians, dear soldiers of the revolution, I give 21 gun salute to our compatriots on Ground Zero. I want to thank you for your dedication and steadfastness. I want to appreciate you for all you have done for Mother Ambazonia. I want to thank you for being dedicated to the cause for which so many have given their lives, their liberty, and their livelihood. It is because of you that we are here today. All glory goes to you. Your daily sacrifices to all the soldiers who are wounded, those who have died for motherland, and those who are in the hinterlands struggling on a daily basis to defend their block and their neighborhood. Ambazonians will forever be grateful for the sacrifices you have made and continue to make. I have come here today to make a short statement, a statement of clarity, where we are coming from, where we are, and where we are headed to. And to assure you, every Ambazonian, so far, you are on course. Our revolution is on course. This will be in history the fastest revolution a revolution that has been fought on every battlefield determined by the brave Ambazonian people. A revolution that is fought in 13 counties, block by block, gutter hole by gutter hole, rooftop by rooftop. You have made Ambalan ungovernable. You have increased the cost of the occupation. Now let me be clear. What we are fighting for is independence. There will be Virtually no space for any negotiation around federalism. If we have a way of moving Cameroon as our neighbor, we will do it. Because for the pain and suffering that they have caused Ambazonia, we will not tolerate or accept any form of coexistence with Cameroon. We will be a free people, self-governing, independent, being able to be the only source of consent for the future government of Ambazonia, for the political, economic, and social systems that will reflect our customs, our norms, and our tradition. That is why our children have bled. That is why leaders have been kidnapped. That is why our women have been raped. That is why our people keep fighting. And I want to assure every Ambazonian living and dead, as long as I break this air, that objective is non-negotiable. It is not even subject to deviation. We will fight until our grave to make sure that Cameroon is pushed out as far as possible from the borders of Ambazonia. Now, I want to be clear where we are. Sometimes when we look at the revolution, we are doubting whether we are making progress or not. The baseline is where we are coming from. A few years back, we presented a strategic plan, a triad approach for the liberation of our homeland. That approach had three components, very important three components. These three components are interconnected. They were designed to achieve short-term and long-term objective. The long-term objective is independence. But when you fight within your block, you are fighting to achieve a short-term objective. The first is self-defense. The idea behind self-defense was because Cameroon, as our experience has shown, is a state that has never negotiated its way out of any political impasse. It has used the brute force of its military to have its way. We realize that as a people, to survive, to stay alive, we will have to march Cameroon method for method, iron for iron, to humble them, to shift the political equilibrium to our favor. When we conceived the idea of the block by block, it was based on the foundation that every single Ambazonian, wherever they are, will be able to fight Cameroon on their own terms, 
to achieve simple objectives. Make that block ungovernable. Make that block ungovernable. Increase the cost of the occupation. So far, our score sheet is 100%. We have made our different blocks ungovernable. We have increased the cost of the occupation. Lest you forget, occupation is predicated on indirect governance or direct governance and extortion and exploitation. Once you take away these two incentives, you defeat the very foundation upon which that occupation is premise. And we can say with pride that from all the 13 counties, villages, neighborhoods, and blocks, you Ambazonians on the ground, you alone, have been able to punish Cameroon, have been able to make their colonial deals, their mayors hiding. You have been able to bankrupt Cameroon Make them unable to get bullets. Make them unable to take care of their own citizens. Sometimes you may ask yourself, how will making Ambazonia ungovernable, how will increasing the cost of the occupation give us independence? This is what you need to know. When the Eritreans were fighting, it didn't take them to capture their own capital to be independent. Once the occupier is unable to govern you, once the occupier is unable to make profit out of the occupation, when it has diverted enough funds from economic, social, and political activities of its own country into prosecuting a war it cannot win, there will be instability in their own country. And they will have to make a choice whether to keep an occupation they cannot succeed with or to lose power within their own country. That is the advantage we are having now. Self-defense must continue. There is no change of strategy. We are observing the momentum on the ground. We are building capacity. We are building experiences. With this capacity and experiences, we will be able to move to phase four, where we can permanently hold territory. And from within those territory, install civil administration that will be able to cater for socio-economic and political needs. At this level, we are doing just fine. Bleeding the occupier block by block and making sure that they cannot govern us from within our own counties and they cannot reap the benefits of occupation. But I also said, fighting alone will not give you independence. The world is an interconnected world. You hear of globalization, whether from the political to the economic or to the social sphere. We are all interconnected as nation states. And there are international systems that determine whether you become independent or not. And those international systems are controlled by the public opinions of different countries that can shape policies of governments within those particular countries. That is why we prescribe internationalization. Internationalization was the method Nelson Mandela used to globalize the campaign against apartheid. For all of you who were in Ambazonia, born more than 30 years ago, you know definitely we participated against the apartheid system. Many countries in Africa had their passport valid for every country except South Africa. So what we determined was if we internationalize our struggle, if we make the Norwegians to understand what's going on, we make the Germans to know what's going on, if we make the Swedish, the Americans, the Australians, the Canadians, the Belgians, the Netherlands to understand our pain and our plight, we pass the relay button to them to bat for us, to beat for us, and to negotiate for us. We influence their public opinion by exposing the brutality of the system. It's going to shape their policies, change their relationship, alter their attitude towards Cameroon. In that way, we move towards isolating Cameroon. Once you isolate them, you bankrupt them because the international lending organizations like IMF, World Bank, 
and bilateral donors will not be willing again to donate money into a country that is orchestrating genocide in your own country. So internationalization brings exposure. It, brings, it wins you friends. It brings you sympathizers, those who can plead your case, those who can back for you, those who can argue for you. Lest you forget, there are hundreds of thousands of Ambazonians who have been thrown out of our country by the brutality of the system. They are stretched from South Korea right up to North America. They have also been conscientized. The demonstrations they made, the mobilization they made, made these Ambazonians the primary investors in their own liberation. Ambazonians have become the primary stakeholders in their own freedom. In this way, they are sure of owning the outcome wholeheartedly. To have an Ambazonian that is not indebted in other stakeholders, so they can reap the benefits, trans transform the socio-economic and political system as quickly as possible to benefit the individual Ambazonian. Internationalization is highly connected because if you take away self-defense, Everyone will be asking you what's happening. So self-defense is connected with internationalization. Self-defense will not succeed without internationalization. Internationalization will not succeed without self-defense. But how do you gain recognition? Mobilizing the international community is not enough. Letting the world know about your pain does not give you independence. That is why we conceive the great idea of ARC. And I know, having spoken to the new leader of ARC today, she has a strong package on how to get Ambazonia recognized. She's worked out a strong package that will be unveiled in the coming days called the CARA program. You can see it materializing. That is the pathway to recognition. Targeted diplomacy. It does not involve only actions within state parties. It involves talking to your congressmen, talking to your churches, influencing opinion from the grassroots right up. So what you do in the grassroots can shape policies of congressmen, parliamentarians, MEPs across the globe. Ambazonians, we didn't just get here by chance. We got here by planning. We didn't get here through propaganda. We got here by education. We didn't get here by trying to destroy our own, trying to walk on the cops of our own. We got here by collaboration, by working together, even when we disagree. That was manifested in the Senate hearing the other day. Every Ambazonian from all the groups were there. From non-aligned, they were there. Ambazonians, if you watch the U.S. Senate, got a hearing. It wasn't by chance. It was hard work. Beginning from ground zero to internationalization, targeted diplomacy. You got the German, more than 48 parliamentarians of the German parliament have written to the Bundestag, that's the German parliament, to suspend economic cooperation. We are talking about 48 parliamentarians, including 78 of the FDP, that the Liberal Democratic Party have written a strongly worded letter asking the German government to cut economic cooperation. That translates into isolation. Isolation gives us more momentum to defeat the occupier on the ground. This is where we are. Don't be depressed. We are on course. Don't be carried away by the gimmicks, the tantrums. Don't be carried away, Amazonians. You have gone so far to be stuck. You've made so much progress to be diverted. It wasn't Ayaba. It wasn't AGC. It wasn't anybody. It was the collective determination of the Amazonian people. Either congregated in different groups or as individuals. Making their case as people as victims. You're trying to change from being a victim into a victor. That's what has brought us here. We've made enormous progress, but we've got work to do, a lot of work to do. We can't mess it up now through rhetorics, propaganda. We have to be consistent with the strategic plan and strategic way of thinking. 
that takes you from point A to point B. Reading your roadmap quite well. Having a big picture of the beautiful state you want to build. It's not true just copy and pasting. It's going to take you nowhere. You have to plan. You have to shape the ideas of tomorrow. You have to be the visionary that understands how to overcome roadblocks. How to navigate through troughs and trenches. How to build bridges where there are only gaps. That's what it's going to take us to get to Boya. As one people. Stake your claim to your country. You are the master of your destiny. You've shaped the future today. Because you want to bequeath to the new generation. A better country that you inherited. The block by block approach is doing quite fine. Form the game changer. Invest your money where when you plow your seed it can grow. Inject funds to arm the guys on the ground. As I have said. Make no mistake about the never again generation. The generation that takes no prisoner of the occupier. As I have said to every occupier, every collaborator, every enabler, we will chase you to the gates of hell. I can promise every Ambazonian, for all those who have collaborated with the system, you will not be buried in Ambazonia. We will find your grave wherever you are buried. Exhume your body and take it into the courts of Ambazonia. Bring you to justice and throw your ashes in the, in the wild sea. You will not put us through this pain and get away with it. For all those who have exploited our resources and stashed them in foreign bank accounts, we will find those money. We will bring the funds to develop Ambazonia. For the Ambazonian, by the Ambazonian. Be confident, my people. Be confident. Don't go to sleep being angry. Don't waste your time in anguish. You have fought a revolution that will go down in the annals of history. As a revolution that shaped the way revolutions are fought. You funded it. You bled for it. You went to jail for it. You died for it. For the purpose of being the sole proprietor of its outcome. I can assure you. We are getting to Boya. And I am glad the leaders in jail are alive. If you are in jail, you are listening to me. We are bringing you home. And for all those who brought you pain, for all those who separated you from your families, they are Tanganjis, they are Kemas, they are Chidi Achus. Your children should know your corpse will not be buried in Ambazonia. And we will find it wherever it is hidden and bring it into the court of Boya. And make sure all those who have gone through pain have post-justice that will give them happiness, the talent, the stamina to be able to build a new country. If never been hopeful, be hopeful today. Think about the soldiers. Think about those fighting. As we sang before, the gendarmes may kill someone today. La République may kill someone today. It may be you, it may be me, it may be someone by your side. It may be you, it may be me, it may be someone by your side. God bless you all. God save Ambazonia.